So here, talk through the Saturday level Sudoku by Ashish Kumar called Against Each Other. It has these two symmetric circle-like shapes. Uh, looks like 22 total givens. Uh, this pattern has some interesting traits to it, just as I look back at it. I think there's one that I actually see during the solve. I don't know that it actually means anything, but like this cell has to be even because of 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 around it. But the main things with this kind of pattern is these kinds of cells, uh, even these cells will be pretty key to see. For this to have a unique solution where we've got like a lot in like this row and this column, it means that these numbers that are just outside have to carry a lot of weight. So that includes both sort of to these spaces. You'll see like the fives are a good spot to be looking at, but even like across this box, this box, that six has just two spaces for it, things of that sort. Uh, even then recognizing when you get like a three note over here, like a three is just in these cells. So lots of different ways this, this geometric pattern gives you some things to look at, not just digit based. It does mean this is gonna be an easy puzzle. And this is one place where again, as we've been doing recently, gonna show you a speed uh, solve, the first solve I made of this uh, puzzle on paper. And my eyes were drawn to the center column and the repeat numbers of sixes and fives there. I think these will for a while be the only digits I can actually place in a big sense. I'm mostly gonna be writing some notes and that's because there's like a lot of Ashish puzzles, a fairly narrow path here. Uh, it's Saturday difficulty, but not necessarily because of swordfish or XY wings or very difficult steps. That's not as often in Ashish's wheelhouse, at least of the puzzles we accept by him. It's definitely in his wheelhouse for other puzzles he'll have like on his uh, video channel. But for us, like it's often, this is a very elegant and narrow path puzzle that could lead to some different challenges. You'll see now in the solving video, I'm, I'm tracking to some of those cells I was highlighting as being pretty special. Like the bottom row does have a two value cell with that three, four. And because of how the seven, nine in the bottom row have to be up above, there's a, a sort of forcing to be in the seven for eighth row in the middle box. I'm also looking and finding there's a three, eight singleton in the sixth column there. So those circles are my paper notation, noting when I know for sure there's a two value cell, it's not the same as my other no notations at least right now. And I, I mostly use it on the hard puzzles where I expect that finding uh, these naked singles, naked pairs, naked triples, like knowing those cells exist, even finding X wings, Y wings is helped by sometimes having those marked in. Searching in different ways for next points of progress. I actually did write the word even in the lower left corner. It's kind of a little sketch there, but yeah, I have noticed the one, three, five, seven, nine, I guess mentally it means like What's going on with two, four, six, eight is in my head. And I think that may help me in a minute here as eventually try to figure out what is the hard step. But I'm still really looking just around for notes I haven't yet marked, any place that might be important. Um, seeing how the ones work together, like an asking of those three cells, that's where the one has to go. But even looks like here, I'm trying to do some coloring. Like if the one is in the far right of the fifth row it then forces three other one positions, but that does nothing to break the grid. So this is too early in this puzzle for a coloring step like that to be useful. But something you can see when you watch my solve is how I'll like use my fingers to track uh, potential placements. Here it looks like I'm spotting the key thing. The four, six, eight at the top can't uh, be in the fourth column and there are only three cells left in the fourth column for those to go into. And so while it's not at all clued by the lower left cell that needs to be a two, four, six, eight, an even cell, the four, six, eight are just kind of mentally jumping out to me. And this is not a trivial thing to spot. Um, I can get lucky and see in a minute. I can get unlucky and see it in 15. So we had some testers that took as long as 30 minutes in the puzzle to spot that triple, but I, I think it's really the only thing to do at that stage and even getting it into the grid. What it really does directly is gives you that seven, nine pair in the sixth column in the bottom that then forces the three to the ninth row, which gives you a three in the lower right box and now puts in that seven, but it still doesn't make things that much easier. You now have one more number for sure and you've got some more notation. I'm doing something that's probably like a sign of uh, where I could actually like improve my Sudoku strategy a little bit. Um, I'm looking at those three circled spots as if it's like an X or Y wing, I guess an, like an X, Y wing pincer. Um, because I have a cycle of those digits three with four, three with eight, four with eight, but there's no cell that's seeing two of them. So there's not any of the right communication. So it's not gonna be forcing enough to say if it were a four, does it break? If it were an eight, does it break? Um, so I hopefully come back yeah, there. I'm now like looking more on the sixth column. The sixth column where that pair went into is probably 
more interesting to look at. One, two, three, and eight are the remaining values there. We've got a one, two, three cell. The fifth row is also a one, two, three cell, but it's that two, eight cell. Again, seeing that the three has to be in the center row, that two, eight feels more important. It's now giving me a fourth two value cell. And the first thing I'm checking, I guess, is does it influence the four, eight to the upper left? If like I put an eight in the two, eight cell, that then forces a four, moves some other stuff around, but that looks okay. I put a two in there. We, we've talked in some of the other videos about trying to see like, is there sign that's true in both of those options or is one of the options broken? Um, none of that's working, but I think that's what I'm looking at as we're looking uh, at this stage of the puzzle. There's something a little more interesting I'm gonna eventually clue into too, which is not about the effect of that 2-8 cell on the box itself. It's gonna be the effect of that 2-8 cell on the right box. Um, and we'll come back to this sort of after the speed solve, because this is a step I don't exactly know the name for. It's a little more common, say, in a regular Sudoku, where not knowing if it's a 2 or an 8, um, we can actually show that that value has to go with the 5 in the fourth row and be a pair on the right side. So where I've kind of drawn that arrow up to the fourth row, if it's a 2 or 8, it has to go up there. The consequence of that placement is I could have placed a 1 on the right side of that row, getting those other ones getting this one in here, getting two sixes for a six five pair. It's actually interesting sometimes watching me solve to see some of the things I'm good at and some of the things I'm still pretty bad at because uh, I just haven't been practicing Sudoku in forever. Like um, I'm doing okay to clear up the top, even recognizing like that first row is done. Uh, the thing to watch out for is like at this stage of the puzzle, the center row, it's not obvious. It's readily completed, but where it's fairly constrained at the start, I now have the one and six on the right. Two, three, nine go into that center row, so the two moving up uh, into the fifth row is forced there. Uh, even if you just kind of didn't have the notes and look back at it, like the center can be fully completed, which then will give you the bottom very fast. I'm just, I'm just not searching there. And so it's the self-critique is sometimes a little easy, but if you are trying to improve in these puzzles, like watching back for how you're solving, seeing things you don't do right, there's something that if I was even in speed solving mode, I would have done faster just then. So let me pause and come back to this. I'm going to probably note it in a bit. Um, when, when you write in a note like the seven note, there's a thing you'll do in a speed solve form of this puzzle, which is to recognize what I've just done is written a note that I should quickly look for if it's part of a uniqueness issue. And that's because I have a seven note, just three cells to the left as well. And this is a stage of the puzzle. A nine can't go near that seven very readily. And so what you can do about that is say a nine is in one of these three cells, you get a one, two, nine, triple, and nine goes right here. And that's by uniqueness. It's, it's trusting this puzzle has one answer. But if I were really in speed solving mode, I'd be putting in a nine here faster. I'm gonna come back to this, but it's almost like I, I'm hesitant to use uniqueness. And in part, yeah, like maybe I still am sometimes editing Sudoku. I haven't tried to speed solve Sudoku, at least practice for competitions in over 10 years. So it looks like I'm finally coming back and saying, oh, like where, what, what values are still left in this box? I have everything but eight and nine now written into the cells there, and there's not a lot of force around the eight. I'm going to finally come back to the digit nine. And I think here where I should have jumped to it sooner because uniqueness uh, rectangles often give you very fast progress. Yeah, no, I'm still, I'm just there, I think I'm now finally at it. I'm writing, I'm writing uniqueness just so I'm noting it and finally getting the nine in that we talked about. And hopefully that now clues me back to the center row, please. Yeah, and hopefully it now clues me to finish the center row. There we are. Uh, this I could have done much easier and much sooner and not with uniqueness at all and all those steps. So uh, again, it's easy to self-critique here. This is still going to be a really, really fast solve for this hard puzzle, but in part because I spotted the triple faster than I should because I was thinking there was something interesting about odd numbers on the left side, and not sure that's really true, but it made me have the 4, 6, 8 jump out faster than they might otherwise. So this is just a standard Stoku cleanup now, looking for the last digits. You got a 1 in there. Moves one's over there, six makes me put another six, puts an eight, puts in a four, puts in a four, puts in a seven, puts in a seven, puts in a nine, puts in a nine. Again, like keep in mind you're writing a number once, finding the next place to put the number, and then jumping to its partner and continuing. So about eight minutes flat for this puzzle. 
I'm writing some of my notes before I go through and check it, but there's definitely a triple. And then and again, I don't have an exact name for the step, something odd in the middle uh, with that uh, two eight cell and how it influences that position. And I think I will now sort of go through and check through the grid, but this is the correct solution. So let's just come through and quickly show you a little bit of the highlights for this puzzle. So if this is the Crypt Notes version of it, for sure from the pattern and the starting givens, if you see these six givens in green for four, six, and eight, you end up with just uh, this cell, this cell, and this cell that can still have a four, six, eight. That now works together quickly with this nine, seven to put in this nine, seven pair and some of the other values. So this is the starting stage of what you're seeing in the video. There are probably some other ways to then use uh, placements once you're at this point, but what I was using in the video was something very interesting about this cell, which we said was only a two eight cell. If this is an eight, it puts an eight there for sure, but conceptually just say it puts an eight with this five in one of these cells. If this is a two, a two can't go here, so two also comes to the top. So a different way of seeing this is this is x, and you get five x up top. And so that means what's left now is anything else, and where x can't be anything but two or eight, like one is still open for this. And so cluing to this one, now having to get to this position, uh, putting in this one, and working from there is, is really how the video goes. Again, we said that a six has to be in the left and right in this puzzle. So this being a six, and then this being two, three, nine. If this is two, three, nine, this has to be eight, this has to be four, this has to be seven. And that's, that's how the faster progress comes through, is if you uh, clue into this right away, uh, which you're able to actually do. So four, three, we'll just sort of follow through just a little steps further. Three here, three there, the nine, two pair points into a nine here. Two coming up with a seven coming up, but a one there. And that's a kind of uh, speed, speedier approach that you can really clue to the middle first. So anyway, hopefully you got through this puzzle. If not, for sure, these green cells were the first aha. And then at least for me, looking towards this red position and seeing how it influences the placements in the right square were my second stage. And those were the two most critical steps to work through this challenging puzzle by Ashish. Happy to have you add in the comments any other ways you got through this puzzle, at least after that triple. But thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you again soon.